All right, so now we're gonna find solutions in factored form. So they're giving us the factored form and we are gonna find the solution. So just remember that if A times B is zero, then either that first factor is zero or the second factor is zero or they're both zero, right? If X times Y is zero, either X is zero, Y is zero, or they're both zero. So that means right here, that if this product of these guys is zero, then either two cosine x minus one is zero, or sine x minus four is zero, right? Remember that from algebra? So now we're gonna do exactly what we started the class doing. So looking at 2 cosine x minus 1, we're going to add 1 to both sides. And I get 2 cosine x equals 1. Then I would divide both sides by 2. So cosine x is positive 1 half. Cosine is positive on the right-hand side, right? Quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. My x value is one half for my family of over threes. So my over three in quadrant one is pi over three. And my over three in quadrant four is five pi over three. Now going to the sine of x minus four is zero, that means the sine of x is four. What's the range of sine? Think about our curve when we look at the graph. How low does it go normally? Well, the, the total distance, but what's the lowest value? How low does it go? Negative one. Right? Just the sine of x. So how high does it go? Positive. Po positive one, right? So four is outside of the range of sine, correct? So we just ignore it, okay? So if it's outside the range, we just ignore it. Because it's not possible, right? It's never going to happen. The sine of x minus 4 is never going to be 0. So my answer is the pi over 3 and the 5 pi over 3. Okay? Again, I have two factors here set equal to 0. So this means that either 2 sine x plus 1 is 0 or 2 cosine x minus root 3 is 0. If 2 sine x plus 1 is 0, I would subtract 1. So 2 sine x is negative 1. So the sine of x is negative 1 half. Sine is negative on the bottom, right, where y is negative, and that's quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. The y value is 1 half for my family of over 6s. My over 6 in quadrant 3 is 7 pi over 6, right, because 6 pi over 6 is pi. And my over 6 in quadrant 4 is 11 pi over 6. Now looking at the other possibility here, adding root 3 to both sides, 2 cosine x is root 3. Dividing by 2 cosine x is root 3 over 2. Cosine is positive on the right-hand side, right? Where x is positive, so quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. 
and the cosine is root three over two for my family of over sixes. My over six in quadrant one is pi over six. My over six in quadrant four is 11 pi over six. When I write my answer, I don't need to include that 11 pi over six twice. Right, so my answer, seven pi over six, 11 pi over six, and pi over six. But I don't need to include that 11 pi over six twice, once is fine. Good? All right, now we have a cosecant and a cosine. We're just gonna keep on doing the same thing. So here, uh, let's see, we're gonna have three cosecant theta plus two root three is zero, or two cosine theta minus one is zero. So we would subtract two root three, right, and have three cosecant theta is negative two root three. I don't know why I was writing it small. And then we divide by three, right? So the cosecant of theta is negative two root three over three. Which means that the sine of theta is negative. If you want to flip it and rationalize it, you can, but that's pretty obvious it's going to be negative root 3 over 2, right? Because if you flip that root 3 over 2, you get 2 over root 3, which you would then rationalize, right? So we know that sine is negative on the bottom where y is negative, so that's quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. And my y coordinate is root three over two for my family of over threes. So my over three in quadrant four is four pi over three, right? Pi, uh, three pi over three would be pi. And then my over three in quadrant four is five pi over three. Going to the cosine here, we would add one and have two cosine theta is one half, oh, is one, sorry, I got ahead of myself. So cosine theta is one half. Then to the unit circle, cosine is positive, quadrant one and quadrant four. Uh, my family of angles with a one-half for x is my family of over threes. My over three in quadrant one is pi over three, and my over three in quadrant four is five pi over three. So again, when we did our answer, we only need the five pi over three once, so we have four pi over three pi over three, and five pi over three. I don't know why I wrote it in that order. The order does not matter. Making sense, I hope? Pretty easy? Good. All right, we have cotangent times cosecant x plus one. Don't overlook that cotangent guy because that means the cotangent of x is zero, or cosecant x plus one is zero. So let's think about if the cotangent is zero. That's x over y is zero, correct? So that means my ordered pair would have to be zero something, right? So zero and a number, we know we have limited possibilities there, right? We also know that cotangent, let's see, is positive. Well, let's see, it's not positive, it's zero, right? 
what are the two unit circle ordered pairs that ha start with a zero? Zero, negative zero, one, and zero, negative one, right? So that means our two possibilities here are pi over two and three pi over two. Going to the cosecant, we want cosecant x to be negative one, which means we want the sine of x to be negative one. And sine is negative one only in one place at three pi over two, correct? So we can just go with those first two answers because we've already got the three pi over two. Okay. So we have a sine and a secant. We're gonna do the same thing. Either sine x minus two is zero or secant x plus one is zero. So we would add two to both sides here and I'd have sine x is two. And now I can stop with that, right? Because two is outside of the range of sine. It has to be between one and negative one. So we can just ignore that and move on to the secant. So secant x is negative one, which means the cosine of x is negative one. And the x coordinate is negative one at only one place which is pi. Okay?